bumblebee memory wire bracelet, you'll need a bumblebee bead, and ours is silver and it's 14 millimeters by 21 millimeters. And then you'll need some chip beads. We're going to use about 20 chip beads. This is a turquoise gemstone, but really it's kind of a teal color. And ours range in size from 5 millimeters to 10 millimeters. We also have some faceted rondelle beads. These are Amazonite and they're three millimeters by six millimeters. We're gonna use 10 of those. And we have some smaller Amazonite rondelles, also faceted. These are three millimeters by four millimeters and we'll use six of those. Then we have some silver beads. We've got these larger round hollow beads. They're silver and they're six millimeters in diameter. We're gonna use 16 of those. And we've got some smaller round hollow beads that are silver. These are three millimeters, so half the size of those. And we're gonna use 28 of these small beads. And we have some curved tube beads. These are really the magic part of this bracelet. And these are silver, 20 millimeters long, two and a half millimeters uh, in diameter. We're gonna use 16 of these curved tube beads. We're gonna put the whole thing together on memory wire. And memory wire is kind of like a slinky and we'll cut a piece of this memory wire. We're gonna use round nose pliers to bend that memory wire, and we'll need these heavy duty wire cutters to cut this memory wire. You won't wanna use your good wire cutters. To make this memory wire bracelet, the first thing we need to do is cut our piece of memory wire. And this bracelet's gonna go around three times, so we're gonna cut three loops of our memory wire. So I'm just going to take the end, this is the cut end, and I'm going to count a loop out. So I go all the way around the outside here to right here is one loop. I'm going to hold that, pinch it. I'm going to go all the way around again, pick up the next loop. That's two loops. And then all the way around again, picking up this one, that's three loops. I want a little bit extra memory wire for this because we're gonna bend some loops in the end of our memory wire to keep the beads from sliding off. So instead of cutting it right at this mark, which is even with this one, I'm gonna go around about an extra two inches. So I'm gonna cut this memory wire right here. And I'm using my not good wire cutters for this. And memory wire is very hard. Sometimes you have to give it a little bit of elbow grease to get it to cut. So there we go. So here's the piece we're going to bead and we can save the rest of that memory wire for another project. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bend a small loop here in the end of the wire. And the way you want to do that is you want to take your round nose pliers and grasp the very tippy end of this memory wire and rotate the pliers. Memory wire is very hard, like I said, so this definitely takes elbow grease but it'll go if you just keep working it. It'll bend. And so we're just gonna twist a loop like that. If it doesn't go all the way around, reposition and just give it a little bit more twist. This is gonna keep our beads from sliding off. Now we're gonna start beading from the other end. So I turn it around and find the other side. This is our cut end. And this is where we're gonna start feeding on the beads. When we designed this, bracelet. We designed it with these large silver beads at each end. It's going to nestle up against that loop that we just made and kind of hide it in a way. So it'll sit up here at the end and it's about the same size as the loop we made. We thought that was a nice way to end the bracelet. That'll go on both ends. We'll have a large bead like that. And then what we decided to do is do segments of these silver tube beads. So the first one we chose is just a one silver tube bead and then a segment of the gemstone beads. Each segment of gemstone beads that we put on we're going to put one of these large silver beads next to and then we'll do a series of five of our gemstones. So I'm going to start with these beautiful little amazonites. These are actually the larger amazonites. We laid this bracelet out in advance and when we had all the amazonites next to each other they just looked a little lost with each other and so we put these tiny silver beads between each one and it really made each one stand out so that's the design we ended up with was we're going to put on five of these larger amazonite rondels but we're going to put these small silver beads between each one mix it into like a little bead cluster on the bracelet 
that's three. And it makes just for a nice design element. The silver's one of the stars of this show because of these beautiful silver curved beads. And putting the tiny silver beads between each one of the Amazonites here, like this, really sets them off, but also gives them a little bit of the added silver shine. And then we decided that we should have a large silver bead on each end of the cluster. So the bracelet basically features clusters of beads like this in this setup and interspersed with the curved tube beads. So that's the next thing we'll put on. And we're gonna put on one of the curved tube beads. And then we're gonna do the same pattern as we did here, but we're gonna do it this time with these beautiful turquoise chips. So I'm gonna start with the round bead, because each one of our bead cluster sections has a bit large round bead at the end. And then we're gonna pick five random chip beads. And random is a great way to describe these chip beads. They are all cut differently. We love chip beads because for one, they're super inexpensive. They're kind of just leftovers from cutting other gemstones. And the way they're drilled, the way the holes are drilled, is very random. So they sit all different ways. So they're kind of kooky looking. So you can see it's starting to shape up. Isn't that pretty? And we were going to design it now with another uh, curved tube bead. And we found out that our beads were all lining up too much. As the bracelet wraps around your wrist, we were getting the same beads stacked on the same beads. So we decided to mix it up. And instead of putting one silver tube bead next, we put three. And what that does is it pushes the whole design around your bracelet a little bit further so these beads don't line up exactly with each other. And I'm just going to keep feeding on these gemstone chips. I'm going to do a section of those. I'm going to do a section of three more curved tube beads. And then I'll show you how we're going to feed on the bumblebee. For the bumblebee section, we thought it'd be fun to do some smaller Amazonite rondels. And we're going to do the same kind of component section we did before, where we're going to start with a silver round hollow bead. This is the large type one. And then we're going to do a small of the Amazonite. And we like how it looks, putting that little silver bead between each one. So we're doing that little silver bead. And we decided to do three of these little faceted rondels on each side of our bumblebee. So I've got two on there. Silver bead between each one. And here's three. Here's our third one. And now we're going to slide on the bumblebee. This bumblebee bead is different than a charm. It has a hole underneath the bee that goes through to the back of the bee. So if I slide it on like this, you'll see that that's how the hole is drilled through it. And ordinarily on a memory wire bracelet, we don't like beads that flip around because the bracelet smashes up together when you wear it and then these beads get kind of lost and don't know which way to turn. But the way we designed this one, when you wear it, the bead will sit flat on the whole bracelet. That is why we chose this smaller Amazonite. It fits right into the bottom of the bead there. And then I'm gonna repeat the same pattern on the other side of our bead. And that's just gonna be another small Amazonite and a silver tiny silver hollow bead. And I'm going to continue feeding on these beads, almost repeating the same pattern on the second half of the bracelet. If you'd like to see the exact pattern that we used written out, we have the complete instructions on our blog at runningwithsisters.com. But you can really put the beads on any way you like. Don't feel like you have to follow our exact pattern. I'm just going to finish feeding these on, and then I'll show you how to finish the end. So 
So we've got all the beads on our bracelet. It looks beautiful. And now we're ready to finish the end. And we gave ourselves a little bit of extra room by cutting more than three complete loops. And you can see we'll have a little bit of an overlap. We think that's pretty, where this one comes further past this bead. And now we want to cut this end and roll another loop in the end like we did at the beginning. If we roll the loop right here, we've got this big gap of wire and the beads will slide around on the wire. We don't want that. So what we need to do is cut the wire with just the right amount so that we can roll it into a loop. So it turns out that's about half an inch, maybe a little bit more than half an inch. And you can practice um, with your own pliers. You can bend a wire and see when you twist it completely, how much space does it take up on your wire. Now remember that this wire is hard to cut. You can buy cu cutters just for memory wire. And if you love making memory wire bracelets, totally recommend that. And that piece flew off a little bit. You'll want to be careful that you don't let your piece fly off like that. Now I'm going to twist a loop in the end of this wire. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grip very uh, tightly at the end. And I'm going to give some elbow grease in here and rotate the pliers like that. And I have to reposition to get it to come around again. And I just want to rotate it until the cut end here touches the bracelet part of the wire. And you can see that was the right length to cut, that that's just the perfect length to make a loop there. And the bracelet is all done. I just want to show you how the bee sits on the bracelet. So when you wear the bracelet and these clusters come together, you can nestle the bee on top like that. And the bracelet will tend to stay put. This is memory wire, it wants to stay together. And so your bee will sit on top like that. And that is our very pretty bumblebee memory wire bracelet.